Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. I'm Russell Mays, Director of Content for Jatai. And today we're going to be studying how to do a Bixi haircut. A Bixi is basically a bob in the back and a pixie in the front. So we're going to start here with a natural center part. We're going to section off a little above the occipital bone to the center of the ear. Then we're going to take a triangular section right in the center, and I'm going to use my feather plie razor. It is the sharpest razor I have. It also has the most control and gives me the most detail of any of my razors in my collection. I'm going to pull this out at 90 degrees from the head, and I'm going to imagine what angle of graduation that I want to create here in the nape. So pulling at 90 degrees and cutting it a little longer at the top of the section, getting a little shorter at the bottom. And I'll just go through with a nice even razor stroke all the way through, and then I'll start to pivot from the center out towards the edges. I'll pull that back into my previously cut section, find my guide, and then follow my guide as I work forward. So this is a classic, you know, triangular graduation type of graduated bob that we're doing in the back, where it's nice and tight down at the nape, and slowly starts to stack and build some volume in the back of the head. Now I'm going to continue my sections here and continue my razoring and trying to keep the razor stroke the exact same throughout all my sections so I can keep an even amount of weight distribution through each section that I'm doing. I've gone through and prepped the hair with a little bit of Jatai Blade Glide to give it a nice smooth cutting experience. Now we're here, we're working on the, the last section. You'll see me pull that out, find my guide from underneath, and work towards the edges here around the jawline. And I want to hit this right around the jawline, right just a little bit under the ear, so when it falls forward, it falls and, and curves with the jawline and with their natural bone structure. Now I'll go through and do the exact same thing on the other side. Starting back at the center, taking my center section and continuing to razor just like I did on the other side. The important thing here is that I'm cutting from the inside towards the outside as opposed to always cutting from right to left, I'm cutting internal out. Doing this method makes cutting the right side of the head a little bit more difficult because I actually have to cut over the hand that's holding the section. So I'm cutting from the inside of my fingers towards the tip of my finger, where on the other side I was cutting from the tip of my finger in towards the knuckle of my fingers. And just following the same guides that I was doing and trying to create the same angles and the same shape on both sides. Again, pulling out my last section, following my guide, working that in, and trying to make sure I fit this right under the ear, right around the jawline. Now here, after I've finished all of that, I'm going to go through with my feather styling razor. Now the feather styling razor has a guard on it, so I don't have to be as careful. So what I'm going to do here is called a sculpture cut, where I'm just basically running the blade across the top of the hair and going through and tapering it and thinning it. At the top of the section, up where my parting is, I use a lot less pressure. And as I get down to the nape where the edges are, I'm using a lot more pressure. So I'm gonna take out more hair down at the bottom of this section and less hair at the top. So what this is gonna do is it allow me to keep the same shape that I have, but I'm thinning it out a little bit around the edges and making those bottom hairs flow and separate and become really, really soft. Now this method does take a little bit of practice. So the first time you're gonna do it, you're gonna go through and use way too much pressure and just whack a big hole in it. So I urge you to practice this on a mannequin head or practice it on uh, somebody that loves you that can't get too mad at you because the first time you're gonna remove some hair. So now we're gonna go back and continue our graduated bob. We're gonna take our next section. This is gonna go to the high point of the ear. We're going to pin all the other hair out of the way. I'm going to pull this out off of peak curvature of the head, which means that if I lay the comb right at my parting, at whatever angle of elevation that that comb is showing me, that's the elevation that I'm going to pull the hair up to. And then I'm going to use my guide from underneath and continue my graduated bob 
So this will help me build up some shape, build up my bob in the back, but also because I'm using the razor, it's gonna keep all kinds of texture into it and I can control how much weight builds up. So I can have a really solid shape, but it will be very, very soft in its appearance because I'm using a razor to apply the shape. Do the same thing on the other side, just trying to make sure I get the sides matching. Being careful not to cut myself too. If you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and the notification bell to be notified of any future Detai Academy content. Now we're going to continue on and taking parallel sections to the previous sections that I had underneath and just continuing that on on both sides. I'm going to pull everything, pin it out of the way, start in the center, find my elevation. Right there is my elevation. That's how I'm going to elevate that and hold that up and then follow the guide underneath, keep a broad razor stroke and continue my graduated bob. Now, whenever you're going to start to use a plie razor, you know, a razor without a guard, I have to be very sensitive to the razor stroke and the moving of it back and forth. If I can take the razor and just go straight up and down, I won't cut myself, even if I touch my finger. The reason that I'll cut my finger is if the blade is moving back and forth, not just up and down. So sometimes I start with a circular motion and that's when I can cut myself. Whereas if I just continue to go straight up and down, I run far less of a risk. Here you can see where my graduated bob is giving me a nice little corner right around the front and continuing that nice solid shape. Going back to cutting with the razor, start small, take your section small, don't start with large sections. Small sections are a lot easier to control. When I apply the razor to the hair, I want the razor moving. Moving razor cuts so much easier than if me uh, than me trying to force it. And also, I want to make sure that I have a very, very sharp blade. The sharper blade makes it effortless to cut. If I feel that the hair starts to push or I have to push the razor against the hair to get it to really cut, it's time to change the blade. Now, here's our last section, and I'm just combing everything in its natural fall and even distribution around the natural parting, and anything that hangs over from the hair underneath, I'm going to cut off. Now, this elevation here, as you see, I'm getting around the front. Around the front, I will elevate it less to build up a little bit more of a solid shape there around the front. So elevate more in the back, a little less around the sides. That would give me a nice bob shape. And just taking my time and making sure everything fits in nice and tight like I want. Continuing the same thing on the other side, trying to match my razor stroke as much as I can. The more that I can match my razor stroke on both sides, obviously, the more even and the smoother and the more balanced that the haircut's going to be. I could always go back in and you know thin hair out more by channel cutting it, but the more optimized that I can get while I'm cutting it, the better it's gonna be, and the, the, the more that the shape is really gonna set in. Here we're gonna start around the front. I'm taking a section from my bang section all the way to the high point of the ear, and now I'm gonna go through and start working on my little pixie bangs and blending that into the corner of my little bob shape right there around the bottom. I think this is too much hair, so I'm gonna pin some of that hair out of the way, and I'm pulling this straight forward. There's my little bang shape, and I'm cutting that down in a nice broad stroke all the way to the corner of my bob shape in the front, right there. That's the length I'm going to, and I wanna make sure everything blends through. As I need to, I'll go through and channel cut some of that out to make sure that my texture is really soft and really separated around the front. I wanna see a lot of separation around the front to give me a little bit more movement and a more lived in type of shape. I think that you know hair fashion right now is all about soft, movable shapes. It's not about this real precise, glass, smooth types of precision that was so prevalent in the 70s. There's so much more freedom of movement in, in today's modern hair shape than it was in the past. 
So we're going to continue on with that. Now we're going to take our next section, pull that forward, follow our guide from underneath. We're going to channel cut first and then cut the length off so that we can kill two birds with one stone. Channeling, removing of weight, and removing of length. If you don't already, please follow us on your favorite social media, at Jatai Feather. We've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, Pinterest, and even TikTok. Now I'm just shaking it to see how it fits in to see if I need to remove any more weight around the front. Going to continue on. As I continue back from the front, I am elevating the hair. So by elevating it, it's going to remove more weight than if I just continue to pull everything forward. So this is going to actually bevel my shape going from the front to the back. So I'm cutting a round shape, not only from the top going down, but a round shape from the front to the back. So it's going to have more fullness around the back, especially around the ears, because that's going to give me my bob shape. But it's also going to be really, really layered, and really textured, so I get that pixie shape around the front and around the top. So I get that, that shortness and that airiness around the front, but I also have some hair to give me some fullness around the ears and make it much more interesting than if it's just a pixie haircut all over. Continuing to channel through, I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. I'm going to work this all the way to the center of the back and then continuing to elevate, bringing that into my previously cut section. Being mindful of my razor stroke, being mindful of how much texture that I'm applying, how thick each section is, because when you hold it up, you can see where the sections are thicker. I'll take out more, like right through there, that's pretty thick. We'll take some of that out. As I get to the bottom, maybe it's not so thick, so I don't take as much out. So I want to pay attention to that, and each section gets its own attention to detail to make sure it fits within its own boundaries. That's why I'm always shaking it so much like this, to see if there's any weight that sticks out like I don't want, and to make sure everything's flowing and give it a nice kind of lived in. So here's our end result, here's our shape. We're gonna go through and blow it dry, and I'm just gonna put the diffuser on, put a little bit of texture spray into it, and just go through and diffuse it and use my hands to style it as opposed to using a brush because I want this to have a, a natural lived in shape and the diffuser and my hands will help me develop that. Put a little bit of styling cream on it at the end just to smooth some of my texture out and make sure that I got my pieciness in there like I want. Here's our end result. And, you know, I think it looks pretty good. We got a nice little bob shape there on the sides and the back that you can tuck behind the ear or I can have that come forward. Got a lot of variety. I like it. Please check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there to make you a better hairstylist and a better barber. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. And thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it.